Now this is what I would call a beautiful park. Here I am actually in the Lochen Park, which is part of the Royal Parks of Brussels. Yes, there's a bunch of parks here in Belgium which are considered royal and this I would say is the most royal of them simply because it's adjacent to the Royal Palace and the Royal Grounds. And it is a vast area. It's actually more like a wood combined with a park and it is the most English style park simply because it has vast green areas of grass and it's just gorgeous and really it's the kind of place that you would get lost in it and at the same time you can really find your peace and meditation in it so well without any further ado let's explore Lachen Park is a public park created in the 19th century under the leadership of King Leopold II the park extends for over 186 acres and houses the royal castle of Lachen this park is really beautiful and is known among tree aficionados for playing host to a rare American chestnut tree with yellow flowers. Adjacent to this park there is also the famous Japanese tower which was inaugurated in 1905 but has been slowly degrading due to poor maintenance. Also close to the park are the royal greenhouses of Lachen which is a complex of greenhouses built in the classical style. The complex has the appearance of a glass city set in an undulating landscape and complements the castle of Lachen. Even though closed most of the year, during the spring of each year, the greenhouses of Lachen are open to the public for almost three weeks. Now this is what I would call an epic building. Right behind me we actually have Le Monument de la Dynastie, which was built in honor of Leopold I. And this was actually built between 1878 and 1881 and it was commissioned by Leopold II which was the son of Leopold I and the successor to the crown during that time. And it is a really beautiful building right here on top of the hill and it's just gorgeous looking at all these sculptures and all the detail that was put into it. And once again it's kind of like looking at a treasure when you're walking through a park that is so vast and then all of a sudden you see this cathedral-like building. It's beautiful. The monument to the dynasty is truly a beautiful honorary monument to King Leopold I and is located on the Place de la Dynastie at the top of a 50 meter high hill. Built by architect Louis de Curte in the neo-gothic style, the monument ends the monumental axis which starts from the portal of the castle of Lachen and goes all the way up the hill. Even though the monument was completed in 1881, it should have been completed in 1880 during the opening of the Park of Lachen on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Kingdom of Belgium. I wasn't kidding when I said that the Lachen Palace was adjacent to the Lachen Park and yes this is the royal palace, the place where the king and queen of Belgium live and of course well I can see the gates right here and you can see in the distance the castle but well you're not really allowed to go on the grounds it's not a public place this is after all the place where the royalty lives but yeah you can see the gate from outside the street and it is a busy street and it is really cool to look at and in some ways proves once again that Belgium is a royal place not just in its parks not just in its buildings but in its country just in general. The Palace of Lachen was originally named the Castle of Schonenburg. It is often referred to as the Royal Palace. Built between 1782 and 1784 following the plans of the French architect Charles de Wailly, after being partly destroyed by fire in 1890 it was rebuilt by Alphonse Ballat. The French architect Charles Giraud gave it its present outline in 1902. It has been the royal residence since Leopold I's ascension to the throne in 1831. The current occupants of the palace are King Philippe, Queen Mathilde and their four children. Even though we have the royal palace, well the Lachen Park has some other little secrets such as the Sturvenberg Castle which is adjacent to the Lachen Park too and it is well worth the detour well because this actually is a place where a lot of the royal family has lived in throughout the decades basically it was bought in 1840 by Leopold II and then given to the Royal Trust and subsequently well even some of the royalty was even born here like Baudouin and Albert II and throughout the decades it's had many different forms and even for 30 years it was used as a guest house for politicians and important people that were visiting the country but yeah even though you can't actually go in it well you can kind of see a peak of the property and it is really worth the detour at least to see the gate. Sturvenberg Castle was built in 1725. 
The first Belgian king, Leopold I, used the castle for his mistress and their second child, Arthur, who was born there in 1852. After World War II, Elizabeth of Bavaria, widow of King Albert I, lived at the castle until her death in 1965. From 1998 to 2014, Queen Fabiola, widow of King Baudouin, called it her home. She died at Sturvenberg on December 5, 2014. The residence has also been home to Princess Astrid of Belgium, the sister of the current King Philippe. Walking through the park, I actually stumbled upon a little chapel called La Chapelle Sainte Anne, which is located right next to a water source called the Cinq Plaies du Christ, and now it's named the Saint Anne Fountain, which is a water source that actually has supposedly some healing properties. And this building has actually existed since approximately the 14th century and it was used for many many years as a church but then in 1973 it was given to the russian church and it's become an orthodox church and as you can tell this building is still pretty well kept and it is kind of hidden in this little park so when you do find it it's kind of like finding a little treasure in the old days the saint anne chapel was a major place of pilgrimage but nowadays this little chapel is mostly unnoticed and remains in a small cult building with a red brick facade and white stone elements even though small it is nice to still see it standing amidst the edge of the forest and lock and park blending the old architecture with the modern city life of brussels as you can tell this fountain actually has some pretty cool architecture. It's in a basin that is semi-circular and this fountain has existed since the 17th century and more precisely after 1625. We don't know the exact date but we do know that in 1625 the Archduchess uh, Isabella at the time was very sick with very high fever and after drinking some of the water from this fountain well she was healed so after her miraculous healing well this source of water was deemed to be miraculous and because of that and thanks to her well we still have a fountain here in the middle of the park centuries later this is not exactly Lachen Park but just a few minutes away from the Lachen Park maybe about a five minute walk away we have the Jardin du Fleuriste which is a really beautiful botanical garden that has a lot of very rare plants this garden has actually existed since Leopold II where he wanted to extend the domain of Stuyvenberg and this is a really beautiful place that has so many different plants since 2005 actually the city of Belgium has taken over this park and they have made it into a place where you can have a lot of experimental plants and it's really a beautiful place that is constantly evolving and on top of that as you can tell it's pretty empty so if you're trying to find an empty green space where you can ponder and meditate and just look at beautiful flowers well this is it. Jardin du Fleuriste translates flowers gardens in English. It is truly a remarkable park. Even its entrance is very interesting as it's almost like a secret garden where you have to follow a narrow path behind a brick wall that lunges an almost highway-like street in order to get to Le Jardin du Fleuriste. As mentioned, this garden was made to be a place for experimentation and exhibition of rare plants, but also a showcase of its know-how and the management of parks and gardens. The park in today's society reinterprets the historic character of the site and gives it a refined modern feeling to it while respecting today's strict ecological standards. And if we didn't have enough for the Parc de Laken and Le Jardin des Fleuristes, well, we also have Le Jardin Colonial de Laken, which is a very historic park because it was created by Leopold II at the beginning of the 20th century when there was a bunch of Congolese colonies back in the day and they wanted to bring back a bunch of plants from Congo in order to study them in Belgium and because these plants are very exotic and they require a lot of heat there was a bunch of greenhouses that used to exist in this park back in the day now they don't exist anymore and this park has been given to the city of Brussels so yes you won't see a lot of historical stuff in this park except for a cool house uh, at the opening of the park at the opening uh, gate of the park and it does look kind of colonial but as i said this is just simply a regular park it still bears its historical name but there's a beautiful forest and a simple really cool nice green area looking at this park from a historical point of view you can see how this garden has a bit of a dark history where tropical plants from africa were being taken in order to see how they would acclimate to another kind of environment this is really a historical example of what colonization truly was back in the day. 
Now simply a park, the most colonial thing that I found in this location was the park ranger's house which does have a very historic feeling to it and seems straight out of a history book and kind of out of place in the middle of all this nature. Still staying in this general area of the Lachen Park, well, we have Le Théâtre Américain, which is a building that was built for the Expo of 1958 that happened here in Brussels. And it was actually called the American Pavilion because it was a pavilion that was gifted to us by America. This was actually a futuristic building with a globe on top of it. But obviously that globe doesn't exist anymore. It's changed quite a lot through the decades. But in the 1960s, it was converted into a TV station and it remained like that for many many years it was a Belgian TV station but then in 2010 that same TV station decided that it was a little bit too expensive to keep renting this place so they decided to move away from it and from then on it's basically been a place where they rent out offices for non-for-profit organizations and even though this building is a little bit in use still nowadays it is a little bit dilapidated and you can tell that it's a little bit abandoned it needs a bit of TLC but it's still right here and it's still interesting to know what it is and to maybe even visit it and I thought also that this would be a perfect place to actually end this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed going on this visit of the Lachen Park and the Royal Parks around this area and if you did enjoy it please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment too. Let me know what you thought of this video and let me know if there's other areas that I missed or other areas that you'd like me to visit in Brussels or in Belgium in general. I love visiting my old country, the country that I was born in so if you have any ideas just let me know. Uh, but for the meantime, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.